And here we are. It's another week of starting out bright. I am so happy to be here tonight with you. And boy, do we have a special guest tonight. Um, before we get started, uh, if you haven't been familiar with Zoom before, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there should be a chat button. And if you have a question for Lauren or for me, please just go ahead and put the questions in and we'll we'll get to them as much as we possibly can. And um, I just want to thank you all for being here tonight. If we have not personally met, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Noreen Savage, and this is nothing official with Bright Line Eating, but I will just tell you very quickly who I am. I began my Bright Line journey in July of 2019 after seeing my friend Lori post on Facebook. And now she posted in May and said if anybody was interested to just go ahead and you know, get a hold of her and my little fingers like fled over to the messenger as fast as I could. And then she proceeded to tell me, and if you're not familiar with bright line eating, there are four bright lines that you don't cross. No sugar, no flour, three meals a day, and weight in measured portions. And to that, I thought, Lori, no way. There is no way I could do that. But my pain in my knee, my swollen feet, my back, at 270 pounds and five foot two, I was holding a lot of weight. Many nights I went to bed wondering if I would wake up. And so that became my willingness to try something so radical after years of trying diet after diet. And I'm so glad that Lori posted that. And one thing she told me is to get into the community um, she suggested we eat bright with lines. Some of you may know starting out bright now, which we're doing kind of as a side to this. But it was there in the community that I just was inspired by so many people. And I promised myself that if I lasted one year with bright line eating, I would do the same thing my friend Lori did. I would post on Facebook I would help anybody I could. Well, just before that year was up, I'm a Christian. I felt God put it on my spirit. Noreen, you can do more than that. This was the time of Zooms. And why don't you just connect people, these people you've met, with people who may be in that same position where I was before I started out. And so that's why we're here today. And I, am, I feel so honored that people like our guest today, will come and share their story. So without any further hesitation here, I want you to meet Lauren Monick. And Lauren is someone who I saw through the Facebook groups. I know that I was impressed with your then and now photos, but there was also, and we talked the other day, what I told you, I felt what sh shone through with you was a humility that came through. And um, well, I'll let you, I'll let you talk about what your journey was. Where were you before Bright Line Eating? And if you could kind of bring us up to speed what your frame of mind was. So good to see you, Lauren. Hi, Noreen. Thank you for having me. It's really awesome to be here. And look at all these people. I see a bunch no. of my friends too, which is really cool. Hello, friends. So great. Um, yeah, but it's awesome that um, I feel similar to you that I feel called to spread the word about Brightline Eating because it changed my life. Food changed my life. And I never thought I'd ever say food changed my life. <laughs> well, it does, uh, doesn't it? <laughs> it does when you're eating food. Right. <laughs> um, it sure made a difference for me. Um, so a little bit about me. I'm a coach. I'm a leadership and wellness coach. And I'm also retired, which plays into my story a little bit. Um, I retired three years ago from public service um, uh, at 55 years old. And um, what happened for me was I retired at 55. I've been public service for 25 years and I'd gone up the ladder. Um, no uh, college education, just, just by the skin of my teeth and my bootstraps, I made it to a senior executive position. And it was hard. 
Yeah. <laughs> it was hard work. And by the time I was ready to retire in March, March 9th, 2018, that was oh, my... Oh, which, by the way, happy birthday, March 9th. <laughs> I do remember talking about that. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, me. Oh, just for all y'all, I love big, my birthday. Big hands so out for I've, been re- I've been kind of ridiculous a lot. Thank you. Um, so I retired on my birthday. And it was happened to be a Friday. And I thought I was going to wake up the next day and be thin. <laughs> I really thought I was going to... Like, it was... I was... I think I weighed 185 pounds on that day and I'm five foot two. Um, and I've never been in a right size body as an adult. So I'll just say that to begin with. So I thought because it was everybody else's fault, but mine, um, that I was going to wake up thin. And when I woke up with a hangover and not thin, (laughs) still fat, um, I was really upset about it. Um, so through, I, during that year, I moved away from everybody I knew um moved two and a half hours away and started a new life me my husband and I and the whole time I was miserable like I kept thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna wake up thin I'm gonna find the answer the thing's gonna happen or it's gonna happen to me and I heard about Brightline eating in August and I went oh nope that's not for me um I'm (laughs) I'm not going to quit eating sugar and flour. You got to be crazy. Um, But the next few months were really hard. And uh, I think if you were here to see the slideshow, you saw a picture of me in a black shirt and my friend is, his face is whited out. That was not my husband. Um, My husband took the picture. I was 180, I was 196 pounds in that picture. I wasn't even at my absolute like I wasn't, I lost a couple of pounds before I started bright line eating. And I thought I looked really good that night. And when I saw that picture, that was November of 2018. And when I saw that picture, I thought, before I saw it, I thought, I look pretty good tonight. Yeah. I got it going on. You were rocking the hair. I was rocking that shirt. <laughs> and I saw that picture and I went, oh my God, Chris can't, that's my husband, Chris can't see this picture. He took the picture. He knew I was fat. But I didn't know I was. And that day I do. And I spent the next six weeks trying to work out, work it off, follow some weird plan. I mean, I tried all kinds of crazy things. And then I read the book. And I was driving in the car to see my mom. And I started, I listened to it in the car. And I started to cry. And I went, this is it. This is, like, it all makes sense. Um, it all makes sense. At that point, when I finally surrendered to the fact that I could maybe have an answer to my overweight, I was an empty sack. There was nothing left inside of me. I was spiritually, emotionally, um, physically spent. There was, like, I had nothing to give anybody else. I mean, oh, my goodness. It hurts me to think about how hard it was at that time. Um, And I think maybe that's sometimes what we need is to be broken a little bit so that something can come in. And it dawned that day, in that moment, like I had a crack and Brightline eating came in Mm -hmm. and I suddenly had a moment of hope. Like, I think I can do this. And that's, it was very, I was like, I looked it up. I think it was December 28th or something. I was, it was just before the new year. Mm -hmm. And I immediately put into place. No, I tried the no sugar, no flour, kind of like I dipped my toe in the water slightly. Like, I thought, it's not, not that hard. Um, I think I might be able to do it. Hmm. And, you know, it was being super open by being in so much pain that I didn't want to be there anymore. I, I started to see for myself in that nine months of my retirement and then the end of the year was I was dreading that I was going to be the football hero who always told the story about what it was like to be 18 Mm. or whatever thing that happened to me before. And that that's how I was going to live my life with a bunch of memories I'd already had. And I wasn't going to be well enough to have some new ones. And that scared me a lot. Yeah. Um, Here you are now open to the world in front of you with being retired. Yeah. And then when it didn't all change and get fixed because I left work, (laughs) I don't know why I thought that that was going to change, but I did. Um, It was like, it was a tough year. 
to get to the point where I was willing to be um, open, open mm-hmm. enough to say maybe. I mean, uh, we're just talking maybe. Yeah, and you know, when we talked the other day, um, you said there was this beautiful analogy that you mentioned, and that's why I put it in the slide show too, is to walk through. And it was the idea of whatever your toughness is, whatever that, that thing is that has brought you down, that that you can use to move forward. But what were yeah. you bringing with you to, with this hope? What were you bringing with you when you say you're an empty sack? You're bringing nothing, right? Other than the memories of failure? I mean, what? Memories of, well, it was memories of, not just, it's not failure so much, but it's like every memory that I'd had before this moment was all I was really going to have. Like I'd had a couple of great moments. I had a great mm-hmm. wedding to my second husband and I have two wonderful children and I have some great I have wonderful grandchildren I don't have great grandchildren yet (laughs) that would be impossible um but I had like great memories but it wasn't like I was making new ones and I couldn't see myself making new ones I was dreaming of making new ones but I wasn't doing I wasn't having the experience of it and And I'm curious were you doing when did you become a coach because I'm just wondering, did you feel kind of like almost fake inside if you were coaching others and you had this to deal with yourself or not? Isn't it it funny how we don't see what we don't see? So at the time, I was coaching people for leadership and I was at work Mm -hmm. and I was doing a pretty good job. I mean, I I think I was doing a really good job of doing as good as I could. Mm -hmm. And... I wasn't coaching people for wellness at the time because what did I know? I had nothing in that bag of tricks. (laughs) I had nothing. Um, But I had like a lot of experience being a supervisor and a manager and coaching to culture. Um, And so I did that kind of coaching and not wellness coaching. Yeah. What, but it sounds like, I mean, you know, one nice thing from my vantage point, I can creep on people. And so I looked on Facebook and, you know, I had, I had seen then and now pictures before, but there was an, a post that you made about your first year. And that first year you gave it all you had is what yeah. I read from it. Yep. When I decided, when I read the book and I gave it a dip my toe in the water and I went, I'm going to do this, I think. Like I started to have a conversation with myself about what would it be possible if I gave it a year? I got nothing to lose except for a few pounds, few. And what if I were willing to be open about it? Like this, I will have beginner's mind. I will, like what amazing adventures ahead of me that I get to learn something new and maybe create a different life than the one I've currently got where I'm an empty sack. Like there ain't nothing I want about that. No. So how did you go about it? So what was your first step? You read the book. Did you do the 14 day challenge or or what was your next step? No, I didn't do the 14 day challenge. I was like, I tried it for a couple of days, you know, like I read the book and I went, hmm, no sugar, no flour, three meals a day. And I think I tried a couple of three meals a day things. I went, I think I can do that. I can live without, I can try it without sugar and flour. I'm all in. I'm going to boot camp. And okay. I forked over. I mean, it was like, I forked over it. the 500 bucks, even though I could have gotten a discount because I knew somebody and I, I just, just got so excited. I forgot to ask her. So I'm like, this is, so this, let me just say, I was really pissed about paying $500. I was so mad. Well, now you have, uh, there's the scholarship program too. So if anybody's out there and go to the official website and even Susan says, apply for the scholarship. So you're mad about it, but you weren't mad then. I was so mad. Oh, you were? Okay. No, I'm, I'm super happy now. I'm like, that's the best 500 bucks I ever spent. But that's... at the time, I was mad because 
Weight Watchers that had my money. I mean, by, with a show of hands, because I can see a lot of you, how many people have joined a diet thing more than once? More than twice? More than 10 times? Oh. And how'd that work? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like how much money did I spend? How much money have you spent? Oh, and wow. so, so I thought $500 was going to be like, here we go again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. But you know what? Everything I saw about what Susan had to say, all the science, the community, everything she had to say, I'm like, I believe it. And here's a community of people of which I know is the number one secret ingredient to success is to have a bunch of people like you supporting you all the time. Never quit your group because your group is everything. I knew that that's the one thing I wanted and the one thing I couldn't find. And this is the one thing that it had. I said, I'm in, I'm going to do it. I'm going to suck it up and pay the $500. Yeah. And I went all in. Susan says, if you, if anybody's done any of her programs, walk all the way in and sit all the way down, walk all the way in and sit all the way down. I did it. I said, I'm going to quit drinking for a year. I'm going to follow the plan for a year. I'm 100% in every decision I made from that moment on. Every single decision was, if it, it was a yes or a no based on whether it was going to mess with my program. Seriously, mm -hmm. like I didn't leave the house for three months. Well, not quite leave the house, but we didn't go out to eat. We were eating out five times a week, six times a wow. week. And I'm like, nope, cooking every meal. I, nothing's getting in my way. Nothing. I said no to so many things. I'm, like, I'm just not going to mess with my program because I don't understand it yet. So I'm going to give myself the opportunity to learn it. So you were really like, like just totally embracing it. Just, I love that so much. I mean, this is so the opposite of what I was doing. And, and again, I'm here, I validate everybody's experience because we are all in a different experience. I practiced for three weeks, no sugar and no wheat. I had other kind of flour. I had corn flour. I had other things. It took me three weeks to get a scale and it was a posted scale, put it on my counter and so then for two weeks, I was like, perfect. And then somebody offered me a drink and I'm thinking, well, what could a drink, you know, one drink is not going to do anything. Yes, it will. You won't lose weight that week. <laughs> and I didn't. And I'm like, it was at that point, I needed that. I needed that one beverage because I realized I'm either in this or I'm not. Because if I, if I go great all week and then I have this cocktail, I've just blown my week. That's how I felt. I wasn't going to lose weight anymore. And what was I doing it for? So, yeah, you were all in. I was all in. I decided. So every year I do a like a, a goal setting for myself because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a coach. And so I did a goal setting. And the year that I started, I decided that I wasn't going to have five goals. I wasn't going to have 10 goals. I wasn't going to have two goals. I had one goal to be bright all year and to get into my right sized body. I guess that sounds like two, but it was one get into my right sized body by December 31st, 2019. Um, I had one thing to do. I stopped making my life so complicated that I had to get all this stuff done. Because, you know, I'm an American and that's what we do. We do stuff. I think it's cool that, I mean, cool, that's not the word really. I think it's amazing when you said your determination was really based, was this for or against my plan? Was it going to keep me bright or not? I mean, wow. If you only had that one thing that you're deciding on every day, that's a pretty easy decision to make. It, it can just most, change most of the time <laughs> most of the time it's easy it's but, easy know, until like was, it's not always well in that when we um when i started bright line eating i had just bought a house and we moved again so remember i had just moved like 
eight months ago or nine months ago. And then I moved again. Like we move a lot, but it was like, it was our, it was like the place we really, really wanted to live. And we just decided to move. So, and then I had to sell a house and then my dad got cancer mm. and my mom had a heart attack. And like in 2019, you think, so 2019 was just a prelude to 2020, frankly, <laughs> but, um, but I had life, life got lifey. And because I had one thing to do, one, 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 stay bright, lose weight, stay bright, lose weight. And you did and it. I, mean, I did it. You did I went it. on a two week vacation and lost three pounds. Okay. So, which brings me to the question, because I know when we talked, you had done it all. You had done the boot camp and you had stayed bright. And then there was a decline. Then there was 2020. Well, well, the thing was, you said you also did reboot, resume. And I'm thinking, okay, reboot, resume. How did that come about? So how did you come about needing reboot, resume? What were... Well, well, I'll tell you what happened. 2020 happened. So, in, so at the end of 2019, when I hit goal weight, the day I hit goal weight, my dad had emergency surgery and they found um, a rupture in his intestine and cancer. And it was bad. And so I lived two and a half hours away from my dad. So I basically spent a month, five weeks with living on my brother's couch, um, not knowing that my dad was dying. Like we didn't know he was dying. We just, we thought he was going to get better. And then he was, we just didn't know what was going on. And I was bright ish. So I'd hit goal weight and gone below goal weight. My husband said, I can feel your ribs. Like, like it was a thing, like a bad thing. And I'm like, that's amazing. Right. <laughs> I was so excited about having ribs. He's like, can you put on a couple more pounds? I'm like, no, like, I don't want to have that conversation with you. But at the same time, here's my brother and I coping with my dad and like the whole, like he passed away on February 2nd and then we did mm. a memorial. And I mean, it was just like, boom, 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 boom. Um, and I had started drinking. I started to have that one drink. And then I added a grain because I was in maintenance. All right. Maintenance. And I started to make exceptions. And I danced with those exceptions through my dad dying and then my friend dying of COVID on March 17th. Right when they shut everybody down, he died. He was one of the first people to die of COVID. Mm. Um, you know, then my mom going to the hospital. You know, like all these things happened throughout the year and COVID. And I just kept drinking a drink and then having, so I'll just call them devil triscuits. Yeah. Just going to say, <laughs> you know what I'm talking they about, Kelly. They look so innocent. They're not. They're, they've got horns and they'll eat you from the inside out. Um, yeah, I had a little, I had a little affair with um, a vodka soda and devil triscuits, and then by the end of the year, I'd gained um, 13 pounds, and uh, it wasn't the weight gain because my, I was wearing size six pants by then, and they're they were a little tight. It wasn't the weight gain. By the end of the year, it was my state of mind. Mm. In des early December, I wrote myself a note. I mean, I was really dejected. I was feeling like that empty sack again. And I wrote myself a little note on a little piece of paper. And I said, I am depressed. I'm really, really depressed. I feel terrible. This is, you know, like I'm in a really bad place. If I think I need to see the doctor, if I don't feel better in two weeks, go see the doctor. And I dated it, it was December 3rd. And I put it on my keyboard. And like, I did all kinds of different things. I had to go see my granddaughters and did all a bunch of stuff. And I came back and saw this note. And I went, oh my gosh, I'm in it it's the food. It's mm. the food. It's the alcohol. It's the stuff that I knew wasn't good for me before. And it's still not good for me now. And reboot resume is starting. And I'm like, I love my community. I'm going to go hang out with them for a few weeks. It sounds, and go like, get straight. It sounds like that. Really, you were okay. And then there was just this slippery slope. Yeah, Until, September was really where I kind of like tripped and fell. So if somebody here was going to feel like they might be right now thinking about this, like, you know what, Lauren, you're talking to, to me. 
It's maybe not the Triscuits. It's maybe the peanut butter. It's maybe whatever. How did you get a hold of yourself? I mean, because that's what, that's what Susan's even, even herself that she's talked about. Reboot Resume is not available to everybody because mm-hmm. you have to have gone through boot camp first, right? Or the 14 day challenge, I think. Okay. Frankly, I do know, I do know a few people who squeezed in mm-hmm. and they hadn't done it. They just, okay. they were like in wheat, right? With lines or, you know, they just got in, but so. You really, Did you, really to do it. you know, we didn't really talk about what tools you've used, especially well in your journey. Were you using all of your tools and you just were not being bright? Okay. You stopped using yeah, your what, tools. So what happens is when, you know, there's that little decline, it's the kind of thing where you don't, you're a frog in a pot of water, which, you know, like you don't feel the bubbles. And I had given up my nightly, I'd uh, given up the nightly checklist. That was the first thing to go. And then my five-year journal went. And then I stopped weighing myself because I thought I knew better. And I could just tell how I felt. Right. And then like, oh my God, all the lies were like, like stacking up and I couldn't see them. And then I started getting lazy about my food plan, writing my food the night before. And that, like all the signs were there for me. Those are my, every single one of those things I do now. And every single one of those things made a difference for me. My, my two favorite tools are the, writing my food down the night before. I do it usually a week before because that way I can plan my food. And I have complete freedom complete freedom from my food. I just walk into the kitchen and go, oh, I'm making chicken or I'm having vegetable soup, which I eat every single day. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's not hard. Um, I did, I still ate three meals a day and I still weighed and measured my food, but that was about the extent of all my excitement. And so for me, the food plan makes a huge difference in the scale. And I never thought that I would say a scale was amazing. My scale's name is Veronica. <laughs> because I love her so much. Oh, you know what? (laughs) The funny thing is, is today even, well, no, it was yesterday. I had hash browns for breakfast and, oh, hi, Penny. (laughs) Um, I had hash browns for breakfast and it was the first time in my life that there were just maybe an ounce left. And I took the ounce and put it aside it actually got thrown out and my husband was around. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, you know what? It's worth it for my piece to just move that aside. And so, you know, it's just very interesting. It's very yeah. interesting that this thing that we think is so confining is now for me, giving me freedom in my mind. Is that how you feel too? Absolutely. I, when I realized, like I just followed the plan. So my favorite thing, just follow the freaking plan. Just follow the plan. When I coach people around this and they go, well, I want to move my fruit. Like, no, just follow the plan. Just follow the plan. (laughs) You, if you do better, you'd be better. But you don't and, know better. And the so plan is the plan is great. I mean, there is some things that you can turn around, like instead of the six and fourteen, some yeah. do ten and ten. And I switched it to eight and twelve. Just yesterday, for the first time ever, ever, my husband ma- is a wonderful cook. He made a phenomenal vegetable puree. And I actually have the recipe here. Maybe I'll I'll post it in in the starting out bright group, it's completely vegetables. And I liked it so much that I just heated that up and it was my fruit and my vegetable. And I guess that's allowed. That is part of the plan that you can do that for lunch. You can have, you can substitute your fruit for your vegetables. It was the first time I did it. And I felt actually full for the first time. So, I mean, so you have, you have your nightly checklist is one of your favorites too, or not? Oh, uh, you know, it's not my favorite, not my favorite, but it 
it, there's a rhythm to my habit stack at night. So it includes doing a meditation, cooking, cleaning the cat box, yeah. <laughs> spending time with my husband, um, my nightly checklist, and my five-year journal. And I like that it's a piece of letting go of my day and getting honest with the things that I said I was going to do. So my nightly checklist is morphed. I change it all the time. Like, what do I want to, what habit do I want to create? Um, like lately I've started, somebody asked in the chat about whether I exercise. I started exercising a grand total of a week and a half ago. And I've been doing this for two years and two months. <laughs> so no, you don't need to exercise. You're free and you will lose the weight. Um, I didn't feel compelled to exercise. That's one of the reasons I did bright light eating, by the way, because I'm like, no exercise. I'm in. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. So I just, and I just started to get, because my body wants to move, but I waited till my body wanted to move. Mm -hmm. So the nightly, I have a habit stack in the evening that I'm building. I have a habit stack in the morning that I'm building. And it took me a while to get to this place. Not something you absolutely have to have, but there is so much comfort for me in these habits so that I know that when one of them, if one of them drops off for like more than two days, it's danger. Will Robinson, you know, like think, think, think you want to pay attention to that. Something's up. Let me ask you about that a little bit more about these habit stacks, one on top of another. Do you have a checklist for that or do you, do you just know I'm going to do this, this, and this? I mean, the reason I ask is because I've just begun a Google Doc for just a nightly personal habits. Okay, we have more visitors. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I love it. Um, um, but it's, I've started doing a Google Doc because, yes, I want to lay out my clothes. I, I know that sounds probably very silly, but incorporating those with, okay, I'm packing a lunch for tomorrow. And it's, you know, Bright Line Eating is not just about the food. I don't believe it's just about the food. It's the mind that I'm worth changing my life about. Um, you know, you, you now coach wellness for people. How do you go about doing that? Like to change the mindset? Well, you know, I don't force people to get coached. First of all, oh, no, they want, <laughs> so they want it, but, but they probably ready. want guidance too. Yeah. So it depends, you know, like I have a conversation with whoever is interested in wanting coaching and saying, what is it that you want? We start from, what is it that your heart wants that you don't seem to be like something's in your way? Let's find out what you want and what's in the way, because it's not your food that's in the way. The food is the invitation. It's the walkthrough of the process to get into here mm -hmm. and here. And so that's what, I, that's what the walkthrough of the door was, which is all kinds of people have all kinds of different ways that they begin their journey of learning about themselves and building their boundaries and, taking care of themselves because we aren't taught how to take care of ourselves very well. Right. And we have to do it. No one else is going to do it for us. Food is our way. You know, like alcoholics have alcohol and gamblers have gambling. And, you know, it's, there's an invitation for everyone. Everybody's got a thing. Ours is food. That's yeah. it. Ours right. is the invitation. Um, and so the, I start to have a conversation about what's going on with you about your food. You know, what's happening for you? What, is, what, are your, what are the dreams that aren't getting realized? How will you feel if you get what you want? And so how do, we, start, how do you, we start there. So do you meditate on that every day for yourself personally, like to keep that goal in mind as far as what I want in my life, the life that I imagine? Or, I mean... Not every day. I mean, I do a lot of, I like to write and I do a lot of journaling. So this comes up mm -hmm. quite often. Um, I do at the beginning of the year go, these are the things if they got done by December 31st, it'd make my year awesome. Like really, they're really out there, right? Like they're like, if I wrote that book or I did that art or I, 
my my newest thing this year is my custom body. Uh, this is my custom body year. I like I don't know if anybody was on the call last week with Teresa, but she called herself a Sharpay. And I'm like, I, I, that's what I call myself. I was laughing. We were all like, I'm a Sharpay. Here. <laughs> here. All the and, Sharpays, raise your hand. Right, all the Sharpays in the house. <laughs> Woo. Um, I that know was that pretty funny. It was hilarious. Well, the thing is, I don't know that that will change. I do know that the second month I started Brightline Eating, I felt like a rock star. Did I look great yet? No. But did I feel amazing? Absolutely. And I know that once I start exercising, it's not really about the loose skin, which is like, it's fine. I'm used to it. And it's, I love myself now in a a way I never did before. It's about doing all the right things for my body so that I can go have the life I want. Like, did you have any mental block though of losing the weight? Because you said that all your adult life, you've, you know, not been in a right size body. Did, was there ever any like, oh gosh, I'm getting too thin? Like you mentioned, your husband said, I can feel your rib bones. Was there any of that at all, or or when people would compliment you? No, Not I had really. a couple people go, "Don't lose too much weight," and I right. thought, "Huh." So I had this the, the thought of, "That's interesting." I'm just going to do whatever I do, but hmm, interesting for you to think that. You don't want me to make you look fat is probably what's happening there. Um, but that didn't, no, I didn't have any of that block. I think at the beginning, I think, and I didn't entertain this thought. So I know Susan talks a lot about not entertaining the saboteur. Um, so I didn't entertain it too much. But I was aware of the fact that I thought that I was going to be the exception to the rule. So one person out of a hundred is, is going to fail for them, right? Like you hear that statistic all the time. Like, yes, it's 99% effective. There's going to be the person who it doesn't work for. And I'm like, that's me. It's not going to work for me because I proved it in every other plan I was in. But it just turned out not to be true. And it's not true for every single person on this call. I promise. Like if that's the thing that somebody, you can't tell someone that. It's like telling somebody how to, that, how much of having a baby hurts. <laughs> it's like you can't explain childbirth and you can't explain that this is for you too. And, yeah. you, and by the way, I'm not special. I am not special in any, I'm amazing because I say so, but in, I'm not special in any way. And not, I get to have this. I, when I decided that I get to have this, I mean, I was like a bulldog. Ow, I'm going to take it. I just couldn't help it. That is awesome. Before I forget, before I forget, you said something a few minutes ago, and I, I was going to ask you a question about it. You said you eat the soup every single day? Every day. Well, this every must day. be pretty good soup. I know that you I- have a website. Um, it's on there, right? Because I did, yep. I did go, it, there's a bright soup, but just tell us a little bit about the soup. Is it a tomato based or what? It's well, it's vegetable soup and is it, to, it has tomatoes in it. I have, and it's all vegetables, hundred percent vegetables. I do use chicken broth and I don't count it as a protein. I just don't. Yeah, I don't think so. you have to. Well, like yeah. we, we, we uh, you know, okay. there, there's a recommendation that you just have veggie broth. And I'm like, no, oh. mm-hmm. it's not tasty enough for me, but it's That's fine. It's in like this you could... too. Vegetable is chicken broth. I mean, yeah, it's actually so a whole I, chicken, but then you take the chicken out. It's amazing. I, mean, I, I, but, I don't like to cook. So but how do you, this, how do you do it every day? You don't get tired of it? I mean that you're having no. it every day. Uh, you know what? It's funny. I thought I was going to get tired of my food and it's, I think it's a misconception. So I figured out what kind of an eater I am. So I eat three meals a day and I look forward to every meal because I don't ruin them in the middle of the day by having a bunch of stuff. Right. Right. So I'm really looking forward to my meals. That's something. Then um, I don't like to cook. So I want the least amount of cooking possible. So vegetable soup and by 10 ounces of vegetable I'm a 10 and 10 so I have 10 ounces of vegetables at lunch and 10 at dinner mm-hmm. and um 10 ounces of vegetables is a lot of vegetables 
Yes. And I thought, well, how am I going to get all that in there? And soup works. So okay. I, I, I fiddle with the soup. So, I mean, it's vegetable soup. Okay. You can do whatever you want with it. And then I add sausage to it. Like I, okay. my, so I add my, pro, I add, I'm a variety eater. So let me just say I'm a variety eater. I like a lot of things. I like lots of flavors. So I split my protein and I put two ounces of sausage in my, or taco meat, or like those are my two go-tos. Or sometimes I'll put um, garbanzo beans, two ounces, you know, the three ounces of garbanzo <laughs> beans, depends if I feel like it. And then I have an ounce of cheese on the side for my fat and an ounce of crunchy, salty chickpeas and six, a bowl of fruit. And I usually, like, there's a lot of different kinds of fruit in that fruit bowl too. <laughs> nice. So, well, I yeah. like variety too. And um, while we're talking about soup, I'm just going to quickly tell you what I've been having because it's been so amazing. We have uh, bonza chickpea um, pasta. I, I was not aware of this two weeks ago. But since we can have six ounces as a protein, I had a third of it, and that is two ounces. And so I could have two-thirds of my other protein, and I would have 2.6 ounces of one day it was a shrimp that we had left over, and another day was chicken. So that went into the soup puree. puree. So another, I like splitting proteins and vegetable, you know, vegetables, proteins, fruit, I split it all. I love the variety. <laughs> and you know what I'm seeing? I, um, I see somebody saying it's like this chickpea stuff is like, for some people, they can't have it. It's dangerous for me. Like triscuits are dangerous for me. Each of us is going to be on our program and do it the way we do it. And I highly recommend you follow it to a T yes. and then try something new. Like I can't eat grapes. Grapes trigger me really bad. I can't, they're okay. sugary. So they're legal, but I can't have them. I have to be really careful with peanut butter. Um, when I was on weight loss that whole year, I didn't eat nut butter because I am a really slow, slow, slow loser. And it just, it was going to get in my way. And I'm like, I can give that up for a year too. Wow. I eat it now, but I couldn't eat it then. Peanut, you know, peanut, a lot of people can't eat peanut butter. One it's thing that thing. Um, Tony Visconti shared was that she gets dry peanut butter. And so when she needs it in a recipe, it's a dry mix, but it will give the, the peanut butter flavoring in there, but you're not going to just eat dry peanut butter normally. And she gets it in the yeah. packets. So she I keeps it I, safe. Yeah. I don't, I think they put stuff in there. I, I don't, I, I don't, I would if have I'm to gonna check put peanut it butter out. Recipe, I'll put peanut butter in recipe. But, um, but you, uh, my point was that you get to learn what works for you and what doesn't work for you as you go along because we've been so used to having processed food as a choice. And now it's all how do you figure it out with your fruits and your vegetables and your one grain at breakfast? And um, how do you figure it out? You know, and we all learn. Like I eat oatmeal most of the time. It's pretty boring. But you know what? I don't want to think about breakfast. I want to get, right. here's the thing about food. Here's the trick. You used to use food as entertainment. I did. Food was my entertainment. We would go out, we'd have beer and eat the things and the stuff. And the, and now it's not my entertainment. It's my fuel. And what entertains me is so much more entertaining to me than food. So I don't care if it's a little boring. Yeah, well, it doesn't really sound that it is boring. If you're enjoying it, that's not boring, you know? That, right. And it takes, I, there's it takes just, the chatter away. There's so much peace. You know what? I know that you wanted to do a little exercise. Do you still want to do that? Because here I it do. is already 8.15. I can't believe this. Or okay. 5.15 if you're on the West Coast. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, so, everybody, if you've got a piece of paper, I've just got this, and a okay. pen. All right. And if you don't, let's wait just a second for people to go grab it. Okay. So one of the best tools for me has been to visualize what I want. Um, at the beginning of boot camp, if anybody ever ends up doing boot camp, Susan does a visualization that rocked my world. I'm not going to do that for you today. Um, but it's a visualization of pushing all the junk away. Mm -hmm. um, when I do 
coaching, I do a lot of visualization because I know that once we put things, I'm a huge fan of a pen on paper. I'm not a huge fan of computery things because this way, this goes into your brain and computer stuff doesn't make it to your brain as much. So you want to rewire. That's why we do this. So is everybody ready? Nod. Got think, it. Yes. Woo. Okay. All right. So I would like for you to draw a big square on your paper like that. Doesn't that be pretty? Okay. Right? And then a smaller square at the top like that. Can you believe I do art? <laughs> Got it. Oh, okay. All right. Now, I want you to close your eyes for just one minute. And I want you to imagine if the magical fairies came down and blessed you, what would be the absolute perfect weight for you to have your quality life? Mm. And write that number inside the small box. Now, once you have the number in the box, you don't have to show this to anybody, but I'll show you mine. It should look like this. I do not weigh 110 pounds. <laughs> it's a goal. <laughs> um, now, I want you to really look at this, the scale. Imagine your feet standing on the scale and this number is here. Now close your eyes again. And really feel what it feels like to be at this goal weight. How do you feel? What are you wearing? What are you going to do today at this fabulous goal weight? What do you have planned? Now feel it, bring it all into your heart. Take a deep breath and hold it in there. And say to yourself, I am echo weight. This belongs to me. When you're ready, open your eyes. Wow. So now you get to take your little piece of paper and put it in a place you can see every day. Put it in your bathroom mirror. Put it on your vision board. Put it in your kitchen. Unless you don't want anybody to know that this is where you're headed. Because it's okay. You know, I got to be honest with you, Lauren. Um, I put down a number that was smaller than what I had been thinking that I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And actually some stuff started coming up that, I don't know, kind of scary. It is scary. I, I mean, got that, scared. And maybe that's just that unfamiliarity. So let's talk about familiarity for a minute. Thank you. We are walking in unfamiliar territory as we walk this path. It is scary some days to get what we want and to give ourselves permission to have it and to say, I'm eating three meals a day, no sugar, no flour. I'm not drinking. I'm making a new life for myself. Gosh, darn it. And some days it's hard. And some days you want to comfort with food because I do it too. I still do it. It's my life. But, um, there's something bigger for us out there. Each of us is way, way more powerful than we think we are. And we're ready to do more. We're going to get scared and it's okay. Be with the fear for a minute. It's all right. I couldn't be with 110 a year ago. I couldn't. I couldn't be with it. And so I settled for 120. And so... 
I want to know what it's like. Mm-hmm. And it may not be the weight that I'm going to end up being. I might get to 110. I might get to 115. I might say, so just to be, I'm, I weigh 125 right now. So I'm five over 120. Thank you, Reboot Resume. <laughs> um, and everybody who's been a part of it. But it's like, and being here with you guys, everybody here helps me succeed. And to dream this dream, like this thing that I just did with you, I did it with you. And it's going in, on my vision board because I do that. <laughs> so, but it's where I see it every day in my closet. Because I'll get up and do it. It's, what it, it's what's going to keep me from eating snacks before dinner or the drink after dinner and sitting around. I mean, it's good. That's I have great. a vision for what I can have. That's great. Um, yeah, the whole, you know, what I'm, I'm picturing a vision board, which I've never done one, but if, this is where it's going to go. It might be this big of a board, but that's where it's going to start. But seriously, there was just these feelings of inadequacy or something, or maybe of being exposed as far as to be that low, or maybe the, the comments like you got the one day that don't get too small. I've heard those before when I, before I even was a hundred pounds overweight, you know, which seems crazy, but yeah, we have uh, comments that come to us that maybe nobody even needs to be saying in the first place. I I like to consider those comments like a bag of dog poo and you don't need them. Like somebody's handing you their thing and they're doing this. Take my issues and my, my stuff. And we go, Oh, let me get that for you. Yeah. And then we take it on badly anymore. No, it's not about you when they say stuff like that. And it's, you know, it's their stuff. We're going to get scared. Noreen, we're going to get scared. And, but don't worry about your future fear. You don't have to go there yet. Worry about today. Just today, just one day. What's that little thing I did? I think Noreen will post it, but I did a piece of art for today. Oh, yeah. And it says one day at a one time. Day, one day at a time. One meal at a time. One breath at a time. One day at a time. Just yeah. follow the freaking plan. <laughs> just saying. Okay. You know, we are getting so close to time. I cannot believe this. And you just told us so much good stuff. But I know that there's somebody here today who maybe is hanging on by a thread or maybe has not jumped in at all yet. What would you say to them tonight as they're considering Bright Line Eating or starting again? Hmm. I believed I could do this when I saw so many other people succeeding. I would say, jump in the pool of community. Just be in the community and be vulnerable there. It's safe. It's a safe place to be because it will, all those people in that community will lift you up above this dark place that you're afraid of so that you can get a gasp of air and see the light and see what's possible for yourself. It's all possible. It is. Reach out to any one of us, you know, like, you know, reach out to me. You know, you told me uh, when we talked the other day, and, I, and again, I want to I thank you, first of all, for allowing me to record this so, so that we can watch it over and over. And I'm going to get that posted in the uh, PowerPoint so that that one day at a time is in there. But you told me the other day that this year you picked a new word. Your word. Uh, pick a word. I pick a word every year to sort of to play with. And I look at it about every month, by the way, I do check in with it and see how I'm, I'm playing with that word. And my word this year is contribution in all the ways that it could possibly be. Um, this world gets to be a better place because I'm in a better place. When I take care of myself, 
I take care of the world. I am the world. You are the world. Oh, I sound so, what's that song? You are the world. Um, <laughs> but my contribution is showing up every day and being authentically me and being of service. Well, you know, um, in this, in this, in this, in this group. I was thinking about that yesterday. One of the little ones who came in uh, in this room a few minutes ago, every day she asked for a picture to color. And so every day grandma goes and not just a picture. I got to pick one out of the computer, Google images, coloring pages till she finds the one because she wants to color it for daddy or color it for Papa or, or somebody like this was yesterday. So cute. But yesterday I'm sitting here in the office and I'm hearing her. Here she is six years old saying, just keep coloring, just keep coloring. And I thought, bless her heart. I really thought about that today. And I thought about your word contribution. For her, her contribution is to color every single leaf and every, every little part of that drawing because that's her service, her contribution to Papa or whoever. And believe me, you know, it obviously makes our day when we get these. And I thought, we're not asked to save the world. We're asked to serve it. And it's if we do that in our very small way, sometimes just being an example for somebody else. Don't you think that just absolutely that counts? because we all have different things. Life gets lifey. There's the cancer. There's the, you know, the complications from so many things, marriages, relationships, work troubles, COVID, all these things come up. And if we can just do that one service, whether it's changing the kitty litter or, or coloring and making someone's day. <laughs> But really, you know, community is really, I mean, that's everything. a service. That is really a service. You know, one of the things that I did when I first started Brightline Eating, and I'm not saying that anybody needs to do this, but it was important for me to do it, was to share my journey. And I shared it publicly. Like, I didn't, I was like in my, I was in Delightful House in the boot camp. Um, but I shared publicly because I wanted people to see, because I was so excited by what, what was possible for me. And I wanted the people who had, loved me all my life and seen me struggle, see me succeed, and that maybe I could make a difference for somebody. Because as a middle-aged woman who thought I was just going to be fat and old, and I don't have to live that life, mm -mm. Um, if I could be hope for somebody, then, then I've done, then that's my work. That's my work. Well, you have, and you have tonight, Lauren, and uh, I really thank you for that. I thank you for sharing your story with all of us, and you truly have uh, been of service tonight and an example to all of us to share our journeys and to lift each other up. I'm going to quickly look to see if there's any, uh, oh, I've seen Triscuits are the devil. Yep. Um <laughs> Correct. Uh, frozen vegetables are helpful. Right. And Lauren, there's a lot of thank yous to you. And thank you for your thank inspiration. You, um, I hope I didn't miss anybody, but um, I will give you the last word if there's oh. any one last thing. Uh, Mar Maria, you can get the recipe at brightsisterrising.com. Oh, and where should anybody contact you as far as if they want to uh, talk about coaching? If you want to talk about coaching, you can email me at lauren at laurenmonac.com. Okay. You can see my name. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, again, thank you. Thank you to everyone tonight. And um, it is just a joy to be here with you. Next week, there will be Heather. She is my Michigan buddy. I don't know if she's on the call tonight. Heather Aldrin Ibrahim. There she is. Okay. Okay. I've not seen her right in front of me, but Heather will be 
here. And I will close as I have each week. Thank you again, Lauren. And thank good you, night. everybody. Thank you, Noreen. <laughs> thank you. Good night. Stay bright. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night, everybody. Three question Thursday. Do you want to play? Sure, let's do it. First question See? is what is your emergency action plan for after dinner? Um, after dinner is not really my problem, but I'll drink a lot of tea and decaf coffee, okay. like one or the other. And I like flavored decaf coffee. So I've got vanilla decaf. I mean, I'm sure it's like the poison of all poisons, but so what? I don't care. Okay. Um, I'm not drinking that much. Um, and keeping my hands busy. So I was saying I, I play video games. So okay. that's what this is all about. Um, okay. So now I, I crochet, to. so that helps me after dinner. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned oatmeal. What is in your oatmeal that makes this special meal okay in the morning? Is it anything fancy? Um, no. Like everybody else who does Bright Lane eating at some point, you land on the thing that you just make every day. Um, it's oatmeal with four ounces of milk, full fat milk, by the way, I don't use low fat anything anymore. Um, which is a big deal because it keeps you satisfied. Um, four, four ounces of milk and a combination of different fruits, um, apples, bananas, blueberries are my primaries okay. and some, ver some amount of each that equals six ounces. And I microwave and some cinnamon and I microwave it all. The other half of my uh, protein is a hard boiled egg most of the time or uh, three little breakfast sausage links. Okay. And that's change it. it up a little bit. A little bit. That sounds great. Wow. That's, that's a really good, satisfying breakfast. Okay. So it here's is. the third question. What is the most surprising non-scale victory you've had? Surprising. Surprising. Um, Fantastic. Well, let me just say that this morning I was folding my clothes and I'm wearing a size four again. And um, I lifted, I pick out the pants out, out of the laundry pile and they're like this big. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> They're, whose are those? They're doll clothes. That's who those are. You're doll. That never <laughs> stops making me happy. I got to tell you. Or, you know, like I was get, I was so big at some point that I, my hip, I, I'm pretty curvy and my hips were hitting the door jams. And so when I noticed that I could get through small spaces, like oh. you're so little, you should be the one who goes and does that. I'm like, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> well, well, Lauren, thanks for playing Three Question Thursday. <laughs> I love Three Question Thursday. <laughs> Yay. Well, oh, Noreen, thank you. It was such a pleasure. It was really fun. Uh, thank you for asking me. Oh, thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. And um, I'll get this hopefully all set up and we'll be posting the video soon. Awesome. Okay. I'm so excited. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. everybody. Thanks for all you who hung Good around. Night. Stay bright.